worship on the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, today we remember that uh, Jesus walked the earth for 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension. And in the season of Easter we remember that every Sunday is a little celebration of Easter. And we should always take the promise of the resurrection and carry with us every moment of our life. Let's start out with confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us repent of our sin and claim the promise of God. Living God, we confess before you and one another our futile ways, our pursuit of perishable things, our own part in crucifying the Lord Jesus. Forgive us, O God. Renew the face of the earth and give us assurance that you have rescued us from the power of sin and made us alive in the Spirit forever. Amen. Christ suffered for sins once and for all in order to bring you to God. Now you are God's people. Now you have received mercy. In the name of the risen Jesus Christ, I declare to you that your sins are forgiven. Lay aside guilt. Put away shame. For you are chosen and precious in God's sight. Live in the marvelous light of Christ. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Children of God. This is the second Sunday of Easter. If you remember last week, we celebrated Easter. We celebrated the fact that even though Jesus was put to death on the cross, 
He rose from the dead because he is truly the Son of God. Well, this week, we hear a story about one of Jesus' friends. His friend is named Thomas. Now, Thomas, on the very first day of Easter, the day that Jesus rose from the dead, he wasn't with his friends. So Jesus, raised from the dead, showed himself to the women in the morning and then to some of the guys in the afternoon. But Thomas wasn't there. And I think Thomas was a little bit hurt, but he wasn't hiding out with the rest of the disciples. So when the other disciples told Thomas, and they said, Thomas, we've seen Jesus, we've seen the Lord risen from the dead, he says, you know what, I'm not going to believe unless I see. Now, when he says he doesn't believe unless he sees, he not only wants to see Jesus, but he wants to touch the wounds of Jesus when he was crucified. He wants to put his finger in the hand where the nail went. He wants to put his hand in the side where the spear went in order to believe. And strangely enough, Jesus, being as loving as he is to his friends, the next week appeared to Thomas and said, Thomas, look, here I am. If you want, you can put your finger in my hand. Now, I wouldn't want to do it. It sounds kind of gross to me, but for Thomas, he needed that. And Thomas then proclaimed Jesus to be Lord and God, meaning that Jesus was God just like the Father was. Jesus gave Thomas the miracle he needed. Now, I don't know if that means that we get to see Jesus resurrected from the dead, at least while we walk this earth. I mean, we might have to wait till heaven, but I do believe that God gives us miracles in order to strengthen our faith. And some people view miracles as something that can't have a scientific explanation. I don't see it that way at all. I see that a miracle as something that can surprise you, that either draws us closer to God or draws us closer to one another. Because if you remember, the great commandments are love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So I want to tell you a little bit of a miracle that happened to me. And this was last summer. My wife and my two boys, Nico and Jake, if you know them, we were on vacation in Minnesota. And we were renting an apartment on a house that had its backyard right next to a woods. And in that woods that morning, we saw some sign of deer. And my boys really like deer. But during the day, Nico and I got into a little bit of an argument because he did something that I thought was, well, disobeying, and I had to punish him for that. And he wasn't talking to me. And as it got evening, I thought, you know what? I'm going to make this right. You know, even if he did something wrong, he needs to know that I forgive him. So I went up to Nico, and I said, Nico, you know, we need to get over this. I forgive you. I hope if you're mad at me that you forgive me. And he still wasn't talking to me, so I said, you know what, Nico, why don't we take a walk in the woods? Because I know he loves to walk and take a walk in the woods. And I said, let's go looking for some deer. And right when I said that, we turned around, not expecting this at all. And there was a fawn right there, so close that Nicholas got down on the ground and he started to crawl toward the fawn and he could almost touch it. Now, when he did that, my younger son must have seen some of the action from the window of the apartment because he comes running out. And when my little Jake comes running out, usually things scatter. But when he came running out, instead of the deer running away right away, another fawn came. And I thought, God is giving me a message here. What's important? Is it being right? Or is it the fact that I have two healthy sons? And I looked at those two fawns, and I knew the answer. And to me, I look at that instance as a miracle. Because I never expected the deer to show up, especially after I just said, let's go looking for deer. I expect us to go in the woods and not see anything, to be honest. But me and my boys came together that day. And for me, a miracle is something unexpected, but it shows the purpose of God. Loving God with our whole heart and loving one another as ourselves. And I think that a lot of us miss out on miracles because sometimes miracles are small things. It might be somebody we don't expect to be nice who really turns out to be nice in the end. Or maybe even just seeing a sunrise or a sunset and knowing that God is running the world. And I think once we realize 
that God's hand isn't just about involved in anything, we're going to start seeing a lot more miracles, just like Thomas did. And after Thomas saw this miracle, what he did was he went out, and he went so far away that he went across uh, by the Indian Ocean into a place called India to proclaim that Jesus Christ truly is the Son of God. So why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our souls so that we can see the miracles before us. And if you want us, help us to be a miracle to someone else. Amen. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, my Lord, my Rock, and my Redeemer. There was a story I was told about a man who had a cabin on Lake Michigan, and he had a dog that was as fast as a bullet, and he used to brag about his dog a lot. And they'd walk along the beach, and he would throw sticks to the dog, and the dog would go and catch the sticks, and he would be uh, amazingly fast, and everybody who watched the dog was in awe. Well, one time a visitor came to the beach, and the man wanted to show off his dog. So he said, hey, I want you to see my dog. Watch this. And he takes a stick, and he throws it out in Lake Michigan. And the dog takes off like a bullet to go and get the stick. And the dog is so fast that the dog is on top of the water. Only its paws are touching the water. It's like an eagle swooping down to get a fish, except it's a dog going to get a stick in the lake and bring it back. And he says, I want you to watch it again. And he takes another stick and he throws it out even further into the lake. And the dog is like a hovercraft. He goes above the water, gets the stick, and brings it back. He does it a third time because in every story you do things three times. And then the man who owns the dog says to the visitor, he said, so, you notice anything special about my dog? And the visitor looks at him and looks at the dog and says, you know, I don't think your dog knows how to swim. Now, there are some people out there that because of their set way of thinking, they can't see anything special or miraculous about anything. You know, they, you have people who uh, wouldn't know a miracle if it hit them right smack dab in the middle of their eyes. And there are some people out there who can't even see reality, even if it's bad. I mean, we all know some parents out there who their child can't do anything wrong. I mean, their kid could basically beat up another kid and it would be the kid who was bullied. It would be their fault. Or we know those people who love their sports teams so much that you could have the most honest, accurate referee and you could have the most dishonest players on their team. And if the referee makes a call against their team, it's always the ref's fault. You also have people out there that God could spell their name out in the sky and the stars and they wouldn't see a miracle. They'd have some scientific explanation. You know what? I think if we understand that God is in control of all, we're much more apt to see the miracles that are around us. And I think there's a lot more miracles than we may take notice of. Now, in today's Gospel lesson, we have one of Jesus' disciples, Thomas, who was not with the other disciples on the evening of the very first Easter. Today's Gospel lesson is about that disciple needing proof of Jesus' resurrection from the dead. Today's Gospel lesson starts out after the women have seen Jesus resurrected and they have seen the empty tomb. It starts out with the disciples locked up in a room because they're afraid of the Jewish religious leadership. They're afraid that the Jewish religious leadership is going to turn over the disciples to the Romans on false charges of treason or sedition, and that they might wind up crucified like Jesus was. Well, with the doors locked, Jesus appears in that room. And he says, peace be with you. And he shows them the marks of the crucifixion, where the nails went into his hand where, and feet, and where the spear pierced his side. And the disciples rejoice because they know their Lord and Savior has resurrected from the dead. And Jesus again says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
I am sending you. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. And he breathes on them. And I really like this part because in the original Greek, the word pneuma means both breath and spirit. So he breathes the spirit, which is basically the same word. Now the Holy Spirit has a separate name, it's parakletos. But here pneuma is the word that is used. And once they receive the spirit, Jesus is going to give them specific instructions. He says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is what we know in the church as absolution, which is usually given upon confession of sins. You know, when I first became a pastor, sometimes people would ask, well, how can pastors get to give the words of absolution? Are you better than everybody else? And I usually say, no, I don't forgive sins. Jesus forgives sins for what he did on the cross for us. What I do is I proclaim the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. It's not because I'm better. Everybody knows that I'm as much of a sinner as anybody else. But it's my job duty. And if I don't do that, then I neglect my job duty. And now it's the disciples' job duty to proclaim the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. But not all the disciples are there. We know Judas, unfortunately, Judas took his own life. So we know he wasn't there. And we know Thomas wasn't there. Because the gospel tells us he wasn't there. And then the other disciples let Thomas know that we have seen the Lord. But Thomas says, you know, unless I see the marks in his hand where the nails went into his hand during the crucifixion, and I can put my finger and put them in the mark, unless I can take my hand and reach it out and put it in his side, I will not believe. Well, sometimes you've got to be careful for what you wish for because you can get it. And the next week, Thomas is with the disciples. And they're locked in a room. And again, Jesus appears to them. And when Jesus appears to them, he says, peace be with you. But he goes directly to Thomas. And he says, Thomas, look at my hand. Reach out your finger. Put it in my hand. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas gives one of the greatest confessions of faith that a disciple ever made. And he says, my Lord and my God. Acknowledging that Jesus is as much God as the Father is. So in today's gospel lesson, we get the equality of the Father and the Son and the gift that they give to the disciples, which is the Holy Spirit. We get the whole Trinity. You know, when we talk about the church doctrine of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we get that doctrine from Scripture. Now, Jesus is going to chastise Thomas a little bit. He's going to say, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who haven't seen and yet believe. Well, Thomas may have needed that proof, but Thomas is going to show that he's going to be an amazing disciple. Of the, living, of the original disciples, of the original 12, I'm not, keeping, I'm not counting Paul in this. I'm not talking about the Apostle Paul, who is the Apostle to the Gentiles because he comes later. But of the original 12 disciples, Thomas is going to travel the furthest to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. He's going to go as far as India, to the southwestern part of India, known as Kerala today. And if you go to that area today of India, and you see people there, there are Christians there. And those Christians will say their ancestors were baptized by Thomas in about 52 AD. And their story has a lot of credibility because these, these churches have a long lineage. In fact, in 1498, there was a famous Portuguese explorer named Vasco da Gama. And he traveled around the southern part of Africa and landed in India. And when he got to India, he expected that all the people were pagans. Well, some of them were. But there were also Christians there. Christians who could trace their roots to St. Thomas. Not bad for a doubter. And Thomas would be martyred. He would be killed by a spear. He would go out and proclaim the news of Jesus Christ, and he would be killed for that. 
reflecting Christ's own self-sacrificial love for us. Now, of course, Thomas didn't take on our sins like Jesus did. Only Jesus did that. But he went against his own interest to proclaim the news of Jesus Christ. Now, I think with the human race, I think we are so geared to protect our own interests. I think we have a very strong self-preservation interest that when we go against it, for our faith, I see that as a miracle, particularly if it helps further our faith in God or our relationship with others. And I see that a lot today. I know I talk a lot about the coronavirus, but everybody's talking about it. And when I see healthcare workers, or I even see the people at Walmart um, who are making sure that we get our food and our supplies, you know, they're putting their life on the line for us, and I, and I salute that. I, I, I think that's a miracle. Also, I look at the police and firefighters and everybody else. But of course, I'm going to notice people who are kind of in the same position as I am. And I want to talk about an Italian priest named Antonio Debbie. Antonio Debbie is a priest in Italy. And why I'm interested in him is he's second career clergy like I am. You know, I was a, a lawyer at one time and now I'm a pastor. He was a pulmonary doctor and now he's a priest. And what I find so fascinating about Antonio is when the coronavirus hit Italy, you know, he realized that as a priest, of course, he has, uh, you know, a, a huge benefit that he can give to people, and that's uh, spiritual health. But he also realized at this time that his job that he had before as a lung doctor would even be more important to the people of Italy. So although he remains a priest, He's gone back to the practice of being a lung doctor, putting himself on the very front lines, being right with the coronavirus patients to help their physical needs. He said when the coronavirus is gone, well, then he can help their spiritual needs. But to me, again, that's miraculous. Because somebody doing something out of the ordinary to promote the kingdom of God. And everywhere there's goodness, there is the kingdom of God. And I think that if we open our hearts and our minds and our souls, we can see the miracles. And sometimes we might even see that God is calling us to be the miracle. Amen.
confessing the words of the Christian faith along with Christians all over the world by using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promise, hope, of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O oh God, when we fear those who worship in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need, especially those who are affected by the COVID-19 virus. The family of Leon Dorn, Rick Hine, Eleanor Knuth, Eugene Crone, Troy Dow, Floyd Fralick, Sally Fralick, and others we name now. Beth Wiseman, Bill and Sandra Manisco, Judy Carr, Eva Chimino. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O oh God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, health care professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. We pray for these St. Luke's members and their family. Jean Friedel, Melissa Johnson, Brianna Taylor, Russell and Sharon Coots, Floyd and Sally Fralick, April Lang, Brian Stoudy, Sandy Northey, Terry Bugler, and Brian Smith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
as witnesses to the resurrected Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.